Hello and welcome to the Salvation's Edge Challenge Guide. If there is a time to get all of the challenges completed, normal or master, it is the week that this video comes out as all of the challenges are available at the same time for the next two weeks. So that's July 23rd to August, uh, technically 6th, but it's more like the 5th. If you want the title, I really suggest you do them now. If you're watching this after that opportunity is over, well, I'll see you next week. The first challenge is called Scenic Route. It's a little weird to describe, but essentially one team needs to travel four rooms deep before an Overload Minotaur is allowed to be killed. The easiest way of doing this is by keeping track of Hobgoblins. When the first two doors open up after starting a cycle of the encounter, one of the two rooms is gonna have Hobgoblins. If you have them, your team will be the team eventually killing the Overload Minotaur, which will be in the fourth room that you eventually enter. If you don't, you're pretty much just gonna be chilling in that first room, killing Hydras for the other team. You can also just count how many rooms you've been in, and if you're not in the fourth room of a cycle, do not kill the Minotaur, let the other team kill the Minotaur. The biggest problem you're gonna have here is accidentally killing a Minotaur, because even though this is a raid, they are made of paper, just be advised. The second biggest problem is just finding the locations of active plates, since the plates that will be active are based on where you killed Overload Minotaurs. Try to keep a mental note of which rooms you have killed the Minotaurs in. I use a 3x3 grid, where 8 is the room with the rally flag, and 5 is the main center room. The second challenge is where you can only drop in 3 resonance into the chest at a time. If you do X2 or X1, that is going to be a failure. This one's a bit more self-explanatory. Instead of everyone grabbing as much resonance as possible, the non-plate players should grab three, the people who are not locking the conduit, while the plate players only grab one. This will ensure that the plate players have zero going into a damage phase, so they won't die to it timing out. The first person to dunk restores 20 seconds to the timer, regardless of how many resonance they put in, while the other two players will restore 60 seconds, 20 seconds per stack. This means that as long as you're going into a damage phase with 40 or more seconds on the clock, you will have a full restoration of your timer. If you find yourself needing additional time, dedicate a specific plate player to grab all three resonance on their side, activate their conduit, and then run to another section of the arena to go back up to three. The people in that other section should wait to lock in their conduit until that player comes over to pick up extra resonance as the resonance on the floor disappears when you lock the conduit. Assuming you are two-phasing this boss, which you should be if you're attempting normal or even master challenges, honestly, your second phase can be pretty terrible and you'll still be able to succeed because the timer on the boss resets to 30 seconds once you hit final stand. My team had a very scuffed run our first time through though, we still made it work. The third challenge is where you cannot pick up the same kind of resonance two times in a row and this persists for the entire encounter, including between rooms. That's it, That this one's pretty cut and dry, just don't pick up two of the same in a row. I mean, I don't know what else I need to say here. A simple strategy is to do an intentional failure in each section of the fight. Spawn in all the resonance that you can. It should only take a couple of back and forths. Then the plate players go grab the resonance that they need, and then the back plate players grab what they need to grab. You kill off your subjugators, and you lock in. This ensures that all the front plate players get exactly what they need without having to worry about picking up dupes. Make sure everyone is ready at the same time and just lock in all at once. The only issue you really should have here is accidentally grabbing a resonance that you didn't mean to pick up, whether you backed into it or jumped into it or you get knocked into it, something like that. The fourth challenge is for Verity. I made a dedicated video for this particular challenge and this one can be pretty confusing to people. So what I've done is just ripped the relevant parts from that dedicated video and I'm just putting it into this one. It's a live demonstration of the challenge with some commentary from me, roll footage. 
So what do you have to do for this challenge? In order to complete this challenge, you need to use all six of the three dimensional shapes that are available to you before you can use the same shapes again. And you also can't make any repeats. So there's a pretty specific order that you need to do this in. So normally, what do we got? This is how you would normally do the encounter, right? The circle person gets the prism, the triangle person gets the cylinder, and then the square person gets the cone. And you do that for all three steps, and then you're out of there in hopefully about 10 minutes, right? But now for the second one, we can't use a cylinder or a cone or a prism. We need to use the cube, the sphere, and the pyramid. Now, normally you can't use these things, but apparently you can. There has been a way to use them this whole time. It's just that nobody knew because you never needed to do this. So we need to take out this second phase and we need to replace it with the cube, the sphere, and the pyramid. And in order to get to this phase is not actually that much more complicated. It's just like an extra dissection or two. It's an extra uh, shadow realm switcheroo. It's not actually that complicated, but I do want to give an example so you can kind of follow along. And I'll have a video example as well that we'll do after I do this demonstration right here. So let's say this was your first phase, CTS. I think that's also, oh no, CST is our other example. Uh, so let's say you do this and okay, boom, that's done. That's your first phase. Now we're getting to, now we're getting to uh, phase two. And this is the one that's in our video example that I will use to cover. Um, so normally you would, you would do something like this, right? You would, okay, CST. So that means you need TS over here, TC here and CS over here. And then you grab your shapes and you get the heck out, right? Now we need to do this. Now there's, you're seeing two options here, right? We could do TTCCSS or SSTTCC. By the way, SS is square, square. CC is tr uh, not cube, it's circle, circle. And TT is triangle, triangle. My team just found it easier to phrase it like this as opposed to like pyramid and, uh, and cube and uh, uh, sphere because people were getting confused with like the C and the S because sphere S is different to square S and C cube is different to C circle. So it was just getting confusing. So we prefer to just be like, pick up two of these shapes. That's how we like to do it. So we have two options here because both of them work, right? The same rules still apply. You can't pick up a shape that is contained in your statue. So if I'm the circle guy, I still can't pick up any circles, but two triangles, those are not circles and two squares. Those are not circles either. So it doesn't matter which one of these you pick when you start doing your calls. You just need to pick one. Just make a call. Maybe who's ever doing dissection, be like, I'm going to make these shapes. So that's what the shadow realm people need to do. In fact, we have a video example right here. So you can see down here, CST was our call and Toes decided, okay, I'm making SSTTCC for our calls for this particular run, which we have down here. So that's what we're gonna do in our example. We're just gonna get rid of these. And this is the call that we decided to make. Again, nothing wrong with using these. You just need to make a call, pick one. Doesn't matter which one. Now you still also need to do the fight as normally because you still need to do something in the fight called removing shadows. And that's why you're not really able to take any shortcuts. And if you need to know why you need to do that, it's just, you need to do it. Like don't even, just, just do the fight normally. Don't try and take any shortcuts. Just do the fight as it's normally done, except we're gonna slot in one extra step. And that's all we gotta do. So what normally happens here? Phase one, you're doubling up. So let's go to our footage here and uh, we'll see that I'm pretty sure I'm the circle guy, yeah. So we have two circles flashing in the back here. That means we're good to go. I'm gonna wait for my square teammate and my triangle teammate to get all caught up, do the doubling up process. I don't actually need to give away anything, but this is what you normally do. You make sure you're giving away the shapes that you need to give away and you have the shapes that you need to have in order to continue to phase two, which is where you give them away. So that's what we're doing. So we're gonna get rid of this. So now we're at phase one. The shapes should look something like that right? And then phase two, that's when we give them away. So I'm giving away my, my two circles and then you're giving away the squares and you're giving away the triangle. So everyone should eventually end up with something like, uh, like this. That's where you're going to end up after phase two, where you give them away. And then normally phase three, 
pick them up, collect and escape. And that's what you would do. And then you'd move to the everybody's dying phase and you have to put the ghosts in the thing. And then you go to another cycle of it. But we need to get to this, right? And we need to get to this from this. Now you'll notice that everyone already has one shape of what they actually need because we need to use the cube, the sphere, and the pyramid. So in this case, instead of collect and escape, we are gonna be adding in a new phase called double up again, where you need to essentially give your shape away, except the shape that you're giving away has shifted based on what your end result actually is. So in this case, so in this case, I have ST, so I need to give a triangle to the person who's collecting the triangles. In this case, it's the person at the middle statue with the square. So I'm taking my triangle and I'm giving them the triangle. And then they have a, uh, a circle and then the person over here needs a circle. So they're giving them the circle. And then this person has the square and then they're giving me the square. And now we have our respective shapes and now we would collect and we would escape. And now we have escaped with our cube over here, our pyramid here and our sphere right here. That's all you got to do. It's just one extra step. Now the person dissecting also needs to create this format in the not shadow realm in the normie realm so that we are able to actually escape. Um, that's what you're going to be doing for dissections. It, the dissections as a result are going to get a little more complicated. You might have to do an extra step in there. You have to think a little bit differently, um, but the process is still the same. You still want to trade the shapes around. You still eventually want to come up with whatever you talked about at the very beginning when you did those call outs. So you're doing SSTTCC in this particular example. So we're currently in our first phase. We have the circles. So I'm waiting for my teammates to trade their shapes. And uh, so I can start sending my shapes out. We like to make sure that everyone has their shapes. Everyone's on the right track. Nobody's bugged or anything like that. So I'm just waiting for my teammates to do their thing. They have done their thing. I am now grabbing my circles and I'm dispersing them to my teammates. So that way they can have their shapes that they want to be making. Witness notices our efforts. We're going to skip forward here because this part does not really change at all. So I've given away my two circles. I am waiting for my uh, next shape to show up. I currently have a square. I'm waiting for a triangle and we're waiting for a triangle and there's our triangle. So now we have hit phase three, right? Phase three. Now we're doubling up again, not collecting and escaping. So in this case, I know that I need to give away my triangle. So I'm just going to skip forward here a little bit. Kill our ogre. By the way, uh, on master, the ogres are unstoppable in case you didn't know that. Um, so make sure you bring some unstop. So square's already on the ground, so there's pretty high odds that this is gonna be a triangle. I grab my triangle, and I'm giving it to our middle statue who needs the triangle. I'm waiting for someone to give me my square. My second square has come in. We have determined that I am the square guy, so I'm grabbing both of my squares. We got one square. We pick up our other square. We have a cube and we're trying to get out and I get out with like one second remaining. You can do it a lot faster. We were just, we were having a time with it and I'm out. Now, every other time, if you do this wrong, you will only see challenge failed when the final person escapes on the second cycle that you're doing. You're not going to see it any earlier than that. And I'll talk about kind of why that happens in a little bit, but that is essentially the challenge. This was their second phase. The first phase we do normal, right? Just, we're just doing it, doing it normally. And then the final phase, we're also just doing it normally. There are no changes to the first phase and the third phase. Now, could you do phase one and three? I forget if I said this already. Can you do phase one and three doing it the hard way? You absolutely can. I don't know why you would make yourself suffer like that, but you absolutely can. So hopefully that was a good enough explanation on how this encounter works with the challenge included. Again, it is just one extra step that you need to include. Sorry, I'll make sure I'll clarify this language here. This is shadow realm phases. Okay, double up, give them away, double up again, collect and escape. Normally, you don't have this, but in this case, you do. The final challenge is the witness where you must shoot all six glyphs at the same time, or rather within about five seconds. What your team should do is split into two groups of three. Group one gets their glyph breaker buff first, group two second. Try to keep people assigned to a specific 
glyph acquisition rotation because if you stack too much resonance, you don't really have any opportunity to get rid of it, nor can you refresh your timer, which is important later on. That's kind of the big hang up here. You can't stack too much resonance because then you'll die. And if you're constantly having to look for a new limb to break, well, that's just kind of annoying. Ideally, you are getting as little resonance as possible because group one is gonna have to wait for group two, which means your resonance may expire and kill you. For those of you in group one, keep eyes on your resonance timer and be sure to get a new stack when your timer is running low. Otherwise, the fight is the same, although you will have to deal with both subjugators being alive while you're doing damage. I understand a lot of teams probably deal with this issue regardless, but it's still something to keep track of, especially on Master where things actually kinda hurt. Those are all of the raid challenges for Salvation's Edge. Again, you have two weeks starting from the release of this video to get all of the challenges done in one raid. I really suggest you take advantage of it while you can, especially if you're going for the title. Otherwise, you're going to need to do it over a much longer period of time instead, and that's kind of annoying. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.